This air bubble right here, it's gonna make me fly. Tinker Hatfield grew up in a small town, which meant that he had few options. He could either do sports or some boring stuff. So basically, what you're saying is he had no choice at all. So he did all that stuff in high school. He played football, basketball, and pole vault. He was so good in pole vaulting that he received a scholarship to the University of Oregon. I already designed all those cool football uniforms for the school. Yeah, those are his designs. Anyways, while he was at Oregon, he, he was coached by the legendary Bill Bowerman. The co-founder of Nike, Tinker was basically a superstar in track and field for the University of Oregon. In fact, he placed sixth in the U.S. Olympic trials while at Oregon. However, an injury in his sophomore season would change his focus in life. You see, he realized that sports were not forever, and he had to take his degree in architecture seriously. He ended up graduating from Oregon with a bachelor's in architecture. Aren't all injuries untimely? Yeah, I don't think any time is good time for an injury. Okay, valid point. Still, the injury influenced him heavily. It probably seemed like a disaster at the time, but in retrospect, I think he was very happy looking back on how things turned out. Anyways, Tinker started working for Nike way back in the year 1981 as a corporate architect. He designed offices, apparel showrooms, and retail outlets. He believed that architecture was the most beautiful thing in the world in the way that it combines science, art, and culture experience. Wait, hold up. You're telling me he didn't start as a shoe designer? Everyone has to start somewhere. It isn't like he wasn't already qualified for the job. He just needed somewhere to get his feet planted. I heard that he took an art and design class while he was working on his Bachelor's of Architecture. Exactly. His understanding of buildings and other architectural creations were essential in his progression as an artist, though. While working as a corporate architect, he designed many of the buildings at the Nike World Headquarters. He used previous experience of architecture that he spent time around and designed that headquarters like a college campus. The buildings were simple yet elegant. As a 19th century architect once said, form follows function. His use of the post and lintel system from the bottom to the top of the building is an example of his simplicity. They were also built with many windows so the employees could see views such as the artificial Lake Nike. There were certain aesthetic pleasing looks to the building in the structure and the symmetry. However, they were also built to be very durable so they could last long and be economically friendly to Nike in the long run. <laughs> the buildings use materials like concrete and metal beams which allows for this durability. He essentially borrowed the ideas of those who had come before him. So basically what you're telling me is, Tinker wasn't anything special in regards to architecture in itself. I mean, no disrespect, but nobody was ever written down in history books for using someone else's ideas. Well, as far as Nike World Headquarters buildings went, yes, there was a building he designed that he added unique features to, however, it is called Camp Hatfield. And it is not an only camp for special events. It is also a vacation home for Tinker and his wife, Jackie. That's really cool. I remember hearing that they brought in some of Nike's athletes for a retreat a couple summers ago. It has some really great features. For starters, it was designed to be very equal friendly and uses as little energy as possible. The defining piece of the building is a tower. In an interview, Tinker said that the tower serves multiple purposes. It has a metaphorical meaning in, in the way that the U.S. Forest Service has looked out towers all over the place. It also serves as a functional purpose and works almost like a chimney. Flu as it sucks hot air during the summer and also is heating the tower since it's a solar hot water system. You're telling me a tower can do all that? It sounds like it, but when are we going to get to the good stuff? You know, the stuff that actually define his legacy. Go ahead then, tell him. I don't think Mrs. Ames is going to be happy about this. All right, time to get to the good stuff. Finally. Let's start with why his architectural background was so important though. Tinker Hatfield understanding elements of architecture and the human body was able to create a shoe that was first and foremost about function. This is why athletes flocked by the masses to his shoes. For example, Tinker understood that the ankle was asymmetrical and so in response to that, he made a shoe with an asymmetrical ankle. He made one side higher than the other to coincide with the ankle being higher on one side. Then, for the midsole of his shoes, on many of them he used a thermal plastic material, which was something that had never been used before. 
It was new technology and it essentially kept the form of the shoe while also being more durable, stronger, and less expensive. Another architecturally sound thing that Tinker implemented was the Nike Air Zoom Bags. These compressed from the floor up so as to absorb the shock at the bottom of the shoe so that it never reached the foot. This idea of, of absorbing shock is big among architects, especially those on the west coast as earthquakes are a recurring problem. Through the use of materials and design, shock can be minimized. Tinker realized this and capitalized by developing a shock absorbing system to put in shoes. When we think of art, it's generally done on some sort of medium such as canvas. Well, imagine that the medium has been manipulated and formed to cover the shape of a shoe. In a sense, this is what Tinker did in creating the design for his shoes. To him, it was just a shoe, because if it was, he would have had no original design and he would have been creating converse high tops. To him, the shoe was a medium itself. From there, he could use different color patterns and structures. Now, what is really cool about Tinker Hatfield is you can see how his creativity progressed because he has about 15 different shoes that he created one year apart from each other. His first Air Jordan, the Air Jordan 1, wasn't really anything special. It was a high top sneaker with a, some basic yet vibrant colors. However, what this shoe did do was start a dynasty. For real though, it was a good start, but he hadn't innovated anything spectacular yet. Let's fast forward three years to 1988. The Air Jordan 3 was the revolutionary shoe that ignited Tinker's success as an architect and designer. Now what was really special about this design were the influences that propelled him to think of these new and interesting features. Back in 1985, Tinker went to France to watch a tennis tournament. While he was there, he visited the Pompidou Center. As many know, the Pompidou Center is a shocking building in the way that it was designed. The originality of the building is in the way that it is turned inside out and the parts are literally showing externally so that they can be seen from people outside. Furthermore, to attract attention, the Pompidou Center used very bright colors so that it would be visible from distances and so that it would be captivating to onlookers. Yep, in fact, Tinker Hatfield said that if he hadn't witnessed seeing the George Pompidou Center in Paris, he never would have thought of showing the visible air bubble on the Air Jordan 3 and many other shoes following that. Another cool thing about the Air Jordan 3 was his use of textiles on the shoe. The Air Jordan 3 featured an elephant print textile design which had never been done before. For the first time, textiles has been put on shoes and consequentially create a new style of art in a sense. So not only was he influenced by piano to show the visible air bubble, but he had his own unique idea in using textiles to give the shoes more character. Alright, alright guys. Well. Let's not get too carried away. Let's talk about the Air Jordan 4 and 5. Okay then, tell us about them. Well, the Air Jordan 4 has some really cool features. Before there were the kid shoes that breathe, there was the Air Jordan 4. It was a netting type design. On one side of the shoe, it almost served as a ventilation system. Another cool design element of the shoe was the back tab of the shoe. It has turtle shell like bumps that symbolizes strength. Let me talk about the fives. They're my favorite. So one of the things that was really cool about these in the design were the spikes on the midsole. To many, they are nothing more than spikes, but Tinker Hatfield drew influence from the Mustang World War II fighter plane. It was sort of a commemoration to World War II in a sense, and his way of paying dues to those who fought in the war. This was also the first shoe that used the translucent sole, which is also a very cool and distinctive piece. Tinker liked to use translucent materials throughout his shoes as a metaphor for looking through someone's exterior and into their soul. It was almost a way to use the shoes as a way to see the way someone played the big game of basketball. Loving sports, Tinker thought it was important to recognize the athlete through his shoes. That reminds me of that one time. What one time? Well, there is a story that Tinker made a pair of shoes for Michael Jordan, and Michael came up and asked him about them after one game. Uh, the shoes had some elements that drew comparisons to the Panther, and Michael was curious how Tinker knew that was, that he was called the Black Cat as a kid. Tinker said that he didn't know, he just kind of saw it in the way that he played. This is sort of an artistic vision that Tinker has. That's amazing. Tinker also designed the Air Jordan 11, possibly the most well-known pair of shoes ever created. With this pair of shoes, he drew his inspiration from cars. Yes, you heard it right. Tinker thought that cars and shoes shapes were pretty similar, and therefore he could take ideas from cars and transition them over to shoes. What he did was use a patent leather, basically a shiny smooth plastic-like leather that, almost, that looked almost like a paint job on a car. Another thing he did to the 11s 
was add carbon fiber to the base of the shoe. Carbon fiber is a lightweight yet extremely strong material. In essence, it made the shoe extremely durable while keeping it light. His incorporation of technology in his designs is fascinating. It really paid off to have an architectural background. Tinker Hatfield has left a legacy on modern culture bigger than any other individual artist. Without him, Michael Jordan would not be the greatest basketball player ever. He would be great, but not legendary. The shoes that mesmerize modern culture cause people everywhere to fall in love with Michael Jordan as a basketball player. Tinker Hatfield helped to combine the utilitarian purpose of shoes with the aesthetically pleasing purpose of art. He once said that, and I quote, art to me isn't just a part to describe the creative process. It is the aesthetics, the color, and the richness and texture and composition. Well, Tinker has done this. His shoes embody this idea and are proof that shoes are a sort of manipulated canvas. Due to his work in shoe design, it has revolutionized popular culture as you now regular see shoe commercials on TV. Yo, Mars Blackman here with my main man, Michael Jordan. Yo, Mike, what makes you the best player in the universe? Is it the vicious stumps? No, Mars. Is it the haircut? No, Mars. Is it the shoes? No, Mars. Is it the extra long shorts? No, Mars. Is the shoes it, right? Nah. Is it the short socks? No, Mars. Money has got to be the shoes. The shoes, 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 shoes. You sure it's not the shoes? I'm sure, Mars. There are also many songs that mention them now as well. Tinker Hatfield helped fuel Nike and make them the global powerhouse of a corporation they are now. He is no simple architect. With an architectural background, an artistic view, and a deeply embedded passion for sports, Tinker Hatfield was able to create and drive a cultural movement that would change the way we look at shoes while also representing the world's consumerist behavior and creating a wearable architectural sculpture that millions would eventually purchase. Bubble that mesh, the box, the smell, the stuff in it.